पेट्रोल डीजल बनाने वालों का बैंड बाजा बजाना है वी विल टेक द मेकर्स ऑफ पेट्रोल डीजल इंजन व्हीकल्स टू टास्क नाउ दिस इज एन इनक्रेडिबल स्टेटमेंट बाय आर यूनियन मिनिस्टर फॉर रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड हाईवेज मिस्टर नितिन गडकरी ही एंड हिज गवर्नमेंट हैव सेंट अ क्लियर मैसेज टू ऑटोमेकर्स टू मूव टू ऑल्टरनेटिव फ्यूअल व्हीकल्स these are sweet sounding words for electric vehicle lovers all over india when a minister from the government is so determined to promote electric vehicles it will be a matter of time before we start seeing changes in our cities and towns what are the implications of such a strongly worded sentence i am more interested in that rather than the hundreds of negative opinion pieces you see in the me- media these days generally by petrol heads and ev skeptics So let's get right to it in this episode of Plug in India Musings. Here are some of the initiatives that are complete or being planned under Mr. Gadkari to promote electric vehicles. Nagpur became the first city in India to have an electric mass mobility system. It will now have a fleet of 200 electric vehicles which includes taxis, buses and e-rickshaws. 100 new Mahindra E20 plus electric cars will be part of the fleet. The rest will consist of vehicles sourced from other companies like Tata Motors, Kinetic, BYD, TVS, among others. So, speaking about the project, Mr. Gadkari said, "Promoting electric vehicles is our priority. We want electric buses, auto rickshaws, and other vehicles to ply in the country. We are engaged in initial talks with SoftBank for loans at low interest rate for a green project. We want to introduce two lakh electric buses for public transport." There are big plans to develop lithium ion batteries in India and efforts are on to remodel the batteries packs made by the Indian Space Research Organisation to make it fit for use in electric vehicles. Suzuki Motor Corp has partnered with Toshiba Corp and Denso Corp to manufacture automo- automotive lithium ion battery packs in India. A 12% levy on pure electric vehicles is applicable under the goods and service tax regime. a move that reflects the government's intention to push its adoption to provide last mile connectivity to metro travelers in gurgaon gadkari flagged off the fleet of first batch of 1000 e-rickshaws from the hura city center metro station established under the ministry of power Energy Efficiency Services Limited (EESL) floated tenders for 10,000 electric cars, of which Mahindra will supply 150 electric cars, while Tata Motors will supply 350 of the 500 EVs to be delivered in the first phase. The orders for supply of 9,500 electric cars in the second phase will be issued after the completion of delivery of the 500 EVs in the first phase. Okay. Let us pause here. <laughs> What is amazing is that Tata Motors have won the majority of the tender order without having a single production vehicle in the Indian market. This win has shocked the EV community in India. But all of us felt that it's for the greater good that Mahindra Electric has some real competition. A shocked Mahindra further issued corporate media statements. The Venom managing director Pawan Goenka said We have been selling electric vehicles in the country for the last 5 years. We have an idea about the costing of various components. Now we find it difficult to comprehend the pricing offered by the other bidders that is Tata Motors. So we will have to take a hard look as whether it would be justifiable to participate in the second phase. Really Mahindra, how can you justify selling the E20 Plus P8? at 12 lakhs when all of us know that a 15 kilowatt hour battery pack should cost you around 2 lakh 50000 rupees or charging around 8 to 9 lakhs for the electric cargo van the e supra first you sell your electric cars at premium rates to ensure sales of your suv and internal combustion engine cars 
and then you don't provide DC quick charge ports to E2O plus P4, P6 or e classic E2O users and then you crib about Tata's pricing. Mind the electric, you are fooling no one. It's time to suck it up and accept competition and prioritize electric mobility. Also, the EESL has invited tenders for nearly 4,000 electric vehicle charging stations in NCR alone. Many Indian as well as MNC players are participating to create massive charging station networks. Commenting on the development, Mr. Saurabh Kumar, managing director at EESL, said the following. There is full justification for a consumer to start using electric cars. Once you have 4,000 charging stations, once you have 10,000 vehicles flying on the roads in Delhi and NCR, people will start demanding electric vehicles. <laughs> Damn right people, no more complaining about the lack of infrastructure to use an EV. By the way, infrastructure is not mandatory to use EVs unlike petrol cars. Every home and business has a socket. All we need to do is plug it in as shown by our amazing EV community over the past four, four to five years. Continuing on our government's effort to promote electric vehicles, Mr. Gadkari visited Tesla Motors in California to make India its Asia manufacturing hub. He has offered land near major Indian ports to facilitate exports to South and Southeast Asian markets. The government think tank Niti Aayog created a joint report with the Rock Mountain Institute. The report said that accelerated adoption of electric and shared vehicles could save $60 billion in diesel and petrol costs by cutting down as much as 1 gigaton of carbon emissions for India by 2030. So kudos to our government for kickstarting our EV industry which will create new industries leading to many jobs over the coming decades and ensuring our cities have clean air to breathe. So, what are the implications that have arisen due to these aggressive moves by our government? There are multiple exciting startups that are working on personal mobility solutions. There are companies like Okinawa Scooters that have launched e-scooters that are doing very well over the last year. Companies like Kinetic Green are already market leaders in e-rickshaw and e-cargo vehicle segment. Traditional car companies like Mahindra and Tata as well as MNCs and Nissan have want to learn, launch electric cars in India. Indian startups, foreign companies, power companies are installing charging station networks. And there are thousands of enterprising individuals who are creating small businesses by opening dealers, showrooms to promote and sell EVs. We are witnessing change all around us. We salute these pioneer entrepreneurs who are launching products despite huge risks and getting people to change their habits from filling up to plugging in. And it is not easy. These are, but these are exciting times and our government has made things favorable for the EV tsunami that is coming. And this is just the beginning. Now, what, have, what about Maruti Suzuki, the Indian behemoth that sells thousands of ice cars to our Indian market? Well, they have made a statement on EVs at last. Company chairman R.C. Bhargava said about EVs. As soon as we can determine the customer preference, we will come up with such models. In the meantime, focus will be on increasing fuel efficiency. Right. This is a classic example of corporate talk. This company is minting money by selling thousands of pollution causing oil gulping cars to the public who blindly trust the brand. Why would they invest money in R&D that would be needed to create an EV? They are in a comfort zone, right? Well, not anymore. As soon as we heard this statement from Maruti, Mr. Gadkari said the following at the Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers Annual Convention. We should move towards alternative fuel. I am going to do this, whether you like it or not. I am not going to ask you. I will bulldoze it for pollution, for imports. My ideas are crystal clear. The government has a crystal clear policy to reduce imports and curb pollution. Those supporting the government will have an advantage and those busy minting money will be in trouble. Marathi, are you listening? I urge you automakers to politely do do research. First, when I urged you to fire electric vehicles, you said battery is costly. I coaxed you to start at least. Now, the battery cost is 40% less. And if you start now, cost will be reduced further on mass production. 
Now we are pretty sure this was a thinly wheeled warning to traditional automakers who are in the comfort zone like Maruti, Hero, Honda and others. And we are absolutely certain that these companies will come in line. We will start seeing e products from them. Okay, so final words. Our, com our government has moved at an electric pace, setting targets, changing policies, creating proof of concept projects, getting the media to report on EVs on a daily basis. Well, this has resulted in a new generation of industry that is being created by smart people in startups who are making the traditional companies sit up and take notice and more importantly, make changes. Let us create this massive movement towards electric vehicles due to the aggressive moves by Mr. Gadkari and our government. So I would like to listen to your comments guys. Uh, what do you think about these moves from our government? Have they done enough? Are you able to see the difference around you compared to three or four years back? Are you excited about electric vehicles, a promise of clean air and quiet cities? What can the government do more? Uh, what can the industry do more? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching uh, the third episode of Plugin India Musings. I understand that we have not been regular with this series, but things will soon change. A uh, team at Plugin India will offer a more consistent content on our YouTube channel. Thanks for liking and commenting as usual.